So you're a person that should have about 50%, like, sorry, in caffeine, one cup a day. Mm -hmm. And then if you're going to have a second cup, it needs to be several hours later because it layers and doesn't break down in your body and you'll get a more, um, a bigger impact from any caffeine you have in. Mm -hmm. And I think we talked, you have one cup in the morning. Isn't that right? That's correct. Perfect. We then look at lactose and you're 50, 50 on this one. And we checked out the genes in the back and that says, you know, you probably get away with lactose, but you need to be a little bit cautious about how much you include in your diet, because if you have any other issues going on, it has a tendency to create some inflammation and uh, weight gain over time. So we really notice this in people over 40 that they're starting to feel sluggish. And when we see it's about 50% red and lactose, we say, so how much dairy is in your diet? People will say, oh, well, it's never been a problem. I'm not sensitive. I'm not allergic. Well, you may not be, but your body still may not break, be breaking it down. It'll depend on the, the health of your gut and the quality of the of the lactose that you're having. And so just be aware that you should be moderate. And I know that's, we talked about, that's what you do in your diet. Yeah. The next one is salt. And when I, and so that one says that if you have, if you don't metabolize salt as well, it can lead to some hypertension and some blood pressure issues, potentially some cardio. So what we know is that people with these variations have, are people that we, we find it in people who have hypertension and, and high blood pressure. So when we examine those people, they have those genes. The studies are not, uh, do not at any point differentiate between the incredibly high quality mineralized salt that you have and straight table salt. So not, I couldn't, through all the studies that I went through, I couldn't see the differentiation. And we know we need trace minerals. Even when I see people read here, I say you still need salt in your diet, but please never use table salt. Only go to the real high quality mineralized salt that you have, um, Sarah, with your business. So it's not that you can't have it. It's just you need to only keep it at very high quality and then watch how you're feeling. Are you bloating? Are you feeling any pressure on your kidneys? Um, you know, so just be careful about how much you have. We all need some salt for electrolytes, et cetera, and for the minerals, but be be aware that's one area to watch out for and i wanted to touch on that with salt and all of the studies that i, I mean whether you look at the um, the cancer studies of from eating red meat or the salt studies usually they're this the case study is on people who are eating the meat with the carbs, the burger with the bun and the French fries, and it's all loaded with sodium. And yes, it's going to cause heart disease. The wild animal protein or the protein without the carbs is not going to cause the heart disease. And your body does, like you just said, needs all those minerals and needs the really good salt. And all of the fast food, the restaurant salts, the table salts, they're stripped of all of those minerals. So here your body is getting a whole bunch of one of the minerals and there's like over 60 other minerals that are lacking. And I know that when I used to go out for sushi, um, all of that salt, I would retain so much water. I couldn't pull my rings off after dinner. But now I, I put loads of the accelerated ancient salt on my food and there's no problem. So Really, it, it is a huge difference, but I also know, and I mentioned this to you before, I've always craved a lot of salt. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very interesting that that is one of my red areas because I've always, always, always put a ton of salt on my food. I've loved salty um, condiments um, and, and now it's making sense. Mm hmm. Right. It's funny uh, when you do get your results, you go, oh, yeah, or you already knew that or you figured it out. And I love how there were several areas in your report you already understood about yourself. And we'll see a few more of those coming up. And um, it's interesting because on salt taste, you've got some variations on how you taste salt. And sometimes that can lead to craving it more. So one thing we didn't talk about and I wanted to mention is it says that I metabolize alcohol very well. I want to make it very clear that that does not mean that I'm very, I could eat, drink plenty of alcohol and not have an addiction to it. This is separate because I know that I have a very addictive family tree. 
um, as far and a lot of alcoholism, a lot of drug use in my in my past. So I've always been very careful. So it's funny to see that it's all in green, but those are two separate things, correct? A hundred percent. All it is is do you have the gene that metabolizes alcohol and can break it down at a normal rate? So right. my children are adopted from Vietnam. They don't have that. This is very red. They drink, you can see it in their face, they flush, they can they'll get sick very easily from it. It just shows that you've got the normal um, breakdown. But it doesn't mean that even when you drink, if you've got a sluggish liver, you could feel terrible. And I mean, it's just not, it's, it's going to slow down the processing even with that gene. So you're 100%. Just because it's green doesn't is not your invitation <laughs> to go drink alcohol and always be aware of other factors. And interesting, you talked about addiction. The smoking behavior one here at the bottom that's 50% red, red is based on a gene that does lead to a compulsive and obsessive behavior, which leads to if you smoke, you're going to smoke twice as much as anyone else. So I can see that you've got some genes that might have linked into some of these other things you just mentioned.